Hi, my name is Elaine and I have a mental illness. It took a lot of years to get to a place where I could say that so openly. But I'm in recovery now. Recovery doesn't mean cure, of course. I've still got my challenges, but I've come to a place where I can better deal and I've got good support. And I feel able to speak out. And what I want to talk about is stigma. The whole project is about how we can minimise it. And I'm here to tell you that it is possible. And it can be done in little, small, individual steps. Small things by ordinary people. And they all build up and make a difference. I spent a lot of years hiding, afraid. Didn't want to talk about how I was feeling. Didn't want to talk about what I was going through. Because I was afraid of the judgement that I would get the labels that would be attached to me and the difficulties that that would bring. Labels are for clothes, labels are for food cans, they're not for people and judgment can be cruel and you have a lot to deal with without the stigma as well. A lot of it has to do with ignorance and quite often what people don't understand they fear and that rubs off and quite often we find that we start stigmatising ourselves. We don't mean to, but little by little it happens and we become trapped and it can be very difficult to escape. And there are many, many people out there suffering with it. Self-harm is a good example. I have problems with self-harm myself. And uh, I didn't discuss it. I didn't disclose it. I kept it to myself because I was so scared of the reaction I was going to get. And there was help out there, but I just didn't a veil of it. I didn't express it. I was scared. I was nervous, perhaps even a little ashamed, if I'm honest, because I'd bought into the image that was being sold to me by the world around me. Um, I began to see myself that way and I took on the label. I mean, that's the cruel thing about it. You take it on. You become the very thing that you despise. But I got through it. I'm in recovery now. Of course, recovery is not a cure, but I'm doing well. And uh, the whole thing about self-harm is a good example of what I'm talking about because there are so many myths and myths take on a power all of their own the more they're passed on. For example, it's a myth that everyone who self-harms is female or is a teenager or part of some dark subculture or trying to kill themselves or perhaps just seeking attention. Um, I'm not saying these things don't happen, but they're certainly not the norm. The, the truth for everybody and the stereotypes are very, very stigmatising and create a lot of problems. Now, with self-harm, of course, depending on the situation, you can have scars and that makes you very vulnerable because those scars are visible. Um, I have been pointed at, I have had whispers, I have had jokes made at my expense and quite often it's as if you're invisible. They think you can't see it or that you can't hear it. And it hurts and you go home and you brood over it and it takes a long time to shake it off. But yet you put on this veneer as if nothing's wrong because stigma has taught you that if you express it, that it will only get worse. It's a cruel twist, it really is. We can beat stigma with small steps, little by little, small changes uh, in attitude mainly. For example, the disparity between the way we treat physical illness and mental illness. Uh, you break a leg, you get a cast, everybody signs your cast, everybody wishes you well, they come round, you have some fun, they help you out with chores, they support you in other ways, they run errands, everything's great. You have a mental illness or you have a period of psychosis, of uh, an issue of self-harm, a suicidal crisis, and it's the complete opposite quite often. And if we can change that, that change of attitude, if we can start to treat everything the same way, give the same empathy, give the same understanding, give the same treatments, give the same support and practical help, then mental illness and all the things that come with it will become just an illness. And then perhaps my hope would be that people would just become people.